What's good guys? It's your girl Aubrey. Welcome back to our channel. So we're back in the cozy living room. So y'all know I'm about to be talking to y'all. So today I, I was just thinking and I'm like, I want to record my natural hair journey because I feel like I've actually had a journey that's worthy of talking to you guys about. Um, Cause besides doing natural hair tutorials, I've never really talked to you guys about my natural hair, like talking about the kind of hair that I have and all the stuff that I went through with this natural hair. And I felt like it was, it's a well needed video because I feel like I finally got it right to where my hair is healthy and I'm no longer struggling to understand my hair. I mean, every day is a learning experience, but I still feel like from then to now, it's been officially three years and three months of me being natural and um, it took me this long to get it right. <laughs> it took me this long to um, have my hair at the healthiest it's been in a long time. So I want to talk to you guys about this natural hair journey. Um, growing up, I was getting relaxers pretty early in my childhood. Um, so being so young and seeing my hair always straight and honestly a lot of the people around me um, had straight hair as well. So I just always thought that's the way everybody's hair is. I didn't know that natural hair existed, curls existed. I had no idea because I was so used to having straight hair and seeing other people with straight hair so i never knew that i had a curl pattern or that my hair wasn't in the natural state i was so young i didn't know so growing up like i said my hair is always straight um when i got to a certain age my aunt was doing my hair for me and doing my relaxers and then um once high school hit i was going to a salon like every two weeks to get my hair relaxed and throughout high school I mean, I still didn't know much about natural hair, so I was always straightening my hair all the time. And I noticed from like eighth grade, um, coming into high school that my hair was getting thinner and it wasn't as long as it used to be. And I'm just thinking like, why is that? I'm not happy with this right now. I'm not happy with what's going on with my hair, but I just still rocked with it um, all the way up until 2014 so prior to the year of 2014 I did not know anything about being natural so I started to notice my mom's hair and I noticed that my mom's hair was very very curly all of a sudden so I'm just kind of like what is <laughs> what is this what's going on and so she started talking to me about her natural hair and I'm so, I was so intrigued like, oh my gosh, look at your curls, you have curly hair. How is this? You know, I didn't know much about that. So she was just telling me all about her natural hair and if you see my dog back here being annoying, like he's back here cutting up. You can't really see him now, but he's on the ground acting a fool. Yes. Once my mom started talking to me about her natural hair, I was just intrigued. Um, hearing her talk about her hair and her curls and all this stuff. So at that point, I wanted to know more because I'm just learning all this new stuff from her. And this made me wonder, like, how many other people are natural and what are they, you know, what are they doing to become natural, you know? So that's when I got YouTube and YouTube was not as big then as it was now, mostly because I mean, in my eyes, it wasn't just because I had, you know, those phones that didn't allow me to have those good apps. And then when I started getting Android, Samsung's is when I was able to access these apps and really, you know, use it to my advantage. So I did a lot of research on natural hair and um, how these people are becoming natural and having this curly hair and how they're able to have curls and then straighten it and then it revert back to curls when they want it to you know I was just really intrigued by that and after I did a lot of research and seeing how people started it made me want to do it because I had been having issues with my hair not being as thick as I know it was before I had problems with it I mean it was growing but it was growing at a very slow rate and I already know that relaxes relaxes okay I already know that relaxers are damaging to the hair um because i mean it's chemicals that are going in your hair to make it straight taking it out of its natural state 
So once I really did my research and comprehended all that, yeah, I made a decision. I want to go natural. And it was kind of hard for me to get started because I had people telling me that I couldn't do it. And it's not that they were saying I couldn't do it, like, no, you can't go natural. It was just people not really believing in me or that I could go without getting relaxers. Um, and I think that is what motivated me to go natural more, um, was people telling me, I don't think you'll be able to do it, girl, you won't last. And look at me now, three years and three months later. 2014 was the year of my transition. Um, after I did my research, I'm like, you know what? It's time to get this in action. So I had got a sew-in for homecoming my senior, yeah, my senior year of high school and this was in 2014 and excuse me and um i told myself after i get this sewing out i don't want to go back to the salon i want to go on this hair journey and start to transition and see if i can last after i took out this sewing um that i did have for some months i could already see curls forming at my roots and I'm like, oh, because now that I had a better understanding of curls and natural hair, I'm realizing like, my natural hair is growing out. And um, at that point, after I saw those curls forming, I'm like, you know what? This is it. This is the mark where I'm going to start this natural hair journey and I'm going to start my transition to being natural. So that is what I did. So I was doing so much more to my hair. I was really tending to my hair because at this point I had to deal with two different hair textures. I had to deal with my natural hair and my relaxed hair. It was easier for me back then um, when I was just starting to, to transition to be able to still wear my hair certain ways because I did still have so much relaxed hair. So I was able to straighten my hair on my own and it would lay nicer. I was able to do a lot of that stuff but as my curls started to grow out more, my hair was so much more thick and having two different hair textures, it was harder for me to figure out what to do with my hair so that's when I turned to Bantu knots and when I tell you guys this was my favorite go-to transitioning hairstyle because it blended my hair so you couldn't really tell too much you couldn't tell too much that I had two different hair textures going on but um but I could still tell I was really self-conscious because I could see like my ends were still really really straight and it was so annoying but nonetheless, I kept transitioning bantu knots and straightening my hair here and there were kind of my go-to um, hairstyles. And then around prom, I um, got another sew-in. And so I had set this goal for myself earlier in that year. And well, in the beginning of 2015, I told myself that once my natural hair, if I can stretch it and it goes, you know, to the bottom of my neck, I'm going to cut my hair or cut the relaxed ends off. So after I got the second, um, my second sew in for prom, I had it in for like two months and then I took it out and guys, I had so many, so much, I had so much new growth. And seeing all those curls, I was a taken back like, whoa. All this hair growing out like this, oh my gosh. And it got me so excited and I was moisturizing it and seeing my curls. And it's like, I hit a breaking point. I'm like, so my hoop earring just gonna fall out like that? No, that's, that's, that's sad. That's really, that's really sad. But yeah, I hit like this breaking point. I'm like, I'm ready to cut my hair right now. And so I ended up just cutting the, I made a little section in the back and I just ended up cutting that. And um, once I stretched the hair, it went to the bottom of my neck and I'm like, okay, that was my goal to grow it to that point. Let's cut it. And guys, I wish I would have took pictures of me actually cutting my hair or recorded a video, but I did not. But I did take pictures after the fact. And once I cut my hair, I was just like, oh my gosh, feeling the hair texture and how my hands just went through the hair as opposed to when I had two textures my hair would get my hands would get tangled in between you know it was such a nice change for me so after the fact I took pictures and did like a length check of how long my natural hair was and I was really happy with my hair and at that point my very first 
hairstyle that I did on my natural hair to kind of showcase that I cut my hair I did a finger coils and it took me forever but um it ended up being so freaking cute and so that's how I showcased that you guys I'm 100% natural now like the transition was worth it I made it and I was super ecstatic about that so um after that it was just a learning process a big learning process for me because after um I ended up cutting all my relaxed ends I told my another goal I had set was I'm gonna dye my natural hair a crazy dramatic color so I chose to dye my hair emerald and I did it myself no professional did my hair I bleached my hair for the first time guys um by myself and I was nervous because I didn't want to mess up my hair which I didn't my hair was still very healthy after I dyed my hair after I bleached my hair and dyed my hair my hair was still healthy I was taking good care of my hair um, at that point because I, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't drying out my hair because because natural hair is naturally dry and it's up to you to make sure your hair is getting all the moisture that it needs. So that's what I made sure I did. But then after a while, I got careless once I started college because I was so busy that I just threw my hair on the back burner, but I was still dying and bleaching my hair even after that point. So I ended up dyeing my hair. Um, after the emerald started to fade, I ended up throwing in some pink and purple dye, which it did not last long. And then after that, I ended up leaving my hair alone and it ended up fading back to the blonde that it was from when I bleached it. So then after that point, I ended up dyeing my hair back black. And um, my hair looks so much healthier that way. So I rock with that for a good while. But then I got bored and that's my issue. I get so bored very, very quickly with my hair that I always want to switch it up. I always want to change it up. So that was a big reason that I experienced a lot of damage to my hair from constantly bleaching and dyeing my hair and not taking care of my hair afterwards. So after I ended up dyeing my hair, well it honestly was, it looked black, but it was honestly a really, really dark brown hair dye that I use. But after that, the black was kind of fading a little bit so then I ended up dyeing my hair um, a copper kind of color, which required me to dye my hair again so it would show up better. And it was doing this where my hair got the most damage because I did not care for my hair as good as I know I should have. And um, and that obviously completely falls on me. My hair is my responsibility and I got lazy with it. and. Like I said, threw my hair on the back burner, like swept it under the rug, kept it moving. Um, I was not tending to my hair like it needed to be tended to. And um, and I noticed that my hair was damaged and I was always cutting at my hair here and there. Not I wasn't cutting enough. Like I wasn't cutting all the damage. I was cutting off some just here and there. But I was still clinging on to that damage and that's something that you should never do because in return your hair ends up more and more damaged so after um, I had that copper color that copper color ended up fading some and then I ended up dyeing my hair again and bleaching it again guys again and I ended up dyeing it a blue color it was called sapphire so I ended up dyeing it that color and even with that color I tried my best to keep my hair as moisturized as I could but my hair was still damaged and there was no way around that um, because either way like I said in my hair video where I talked about the color I most recently dyed my hair putting that bleach and hair dye in your hair is still damaging to your hair no matter what but as long as you're making sure that you're taking those extra steps to make sure your hair to make sure your hair is as moisturized as possible, you can prevent a lot of damage. You know, you can put that moisture back in your hair just as long as you're doing what you need to do. And by the time that got through my head, it was too late. My hair was so damaged. And um, so one day I was fed up. I hit another breaking point. I'm like, I'm cutting my hair again. 
I cut a good amount of hair off of my hair and when I tell you guys this was the best decision I could have made for my hair it was the best decision I I could have ever made because my hair has flourished ever since then and when I cut my hair that had to be it was either April I want to say like April excuse me April of 2017 this year so I ended up cutting it and my hair I made sure I was deep conditioning every week I was leaving moisture in my hair co-washing my hair deep um oil treatments all that on my hair protective styling anything I could do to get my hair back to the state that it was when it was at its healthiest I was gonna make sure I did that and find time for my hair no matter what and I have been doing that from April to this point right now and I'm gonna continue to do it on and on but anyways after cutting my hair I dyed my hair and bleached my hair again but this time it was different this time my hair was still in a healthy state and I took so much care of my hair so good care of my hair uh, making sure it was moisturized deep conditioning I was even deep conditioning like twice a week and um, it was the best thing I could have ever done to my hair because it's just been flourishing and growing like crazy since then. And I've been protective styling, throwing on those wigs, um, twist outs, all that good stuff. Like I was doing it all and I'm still doing it now. Like I'm currently rocking a twist out right now. Um, so I was just making sure I did everything I had to do and it took me from june of 2015 to august of 2017 to get it right and it's never too late to get it right it's never too late to start you know your healthy hair journey it's never too late so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this natural hair journey video so i'm going to leave a playlist to all of our natural hair videos just in case you guys are interested and i love you guys and i'll see you soon bye I need me least by four of them, more of them, more you on me, on me.